Okay, now we can start. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm with a good friend of mine, uh, Matthew. Uh, in Romanian, it's Matteo Simon. He is a, uh, yes. a guy I've known, yeah, for how long? Maybe uh, five years, I think, since I first met you on one of my tours to Brand Castle. Um, a little bit about, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about your you know what what you do in Romania, but tell us about the restrictions in place right now because of the pandemic in uh, where you live in Romania, Matthew. Well, well where I live uh, in Zernest, uh are exactly the same restriction that you probably heard that they are in place in uh, France, in uh, uh, UK, in uh, Italy. Uh, we only have one uh, one city which is uh, totally locked down, which is Suchava up north. But here we can walk around uh, if we uh, write a piece of paper and uh, we declare where we go, and we can go to the uh, you know for grocery or to buy some water and uh, what you need for your daily basic uh, food and water and all this kind of stuff. But your your jobs, um, let's just talk about Brand Castle. You're normally, one of your jobs is you're a tour guide at the magnificent Brand Castle. Uh, that obviously shut down, so there's no public going to the castle. That means you've, you've got no job at the moment. Yes, uh, I think I am out of uh, my job since uh, uh, 12 of March. Mars, yeah, and uh, pretty soon after that, uh, they declared the emer emergency state of fact in Romania, and uh, obviously everything that includes tourism is off. Hotels, yeah. restaurants, bars, it's off. Um, only, only uh, if you want to go and buy something to eat and water and all the necessities necessity for a normal day except that we are not allowed to walk around. And, nor, and the, one of your other jobs, um, are you still part-time ski instructor, or was that a few years ago? Uh, a few years ago, because uh, when it comes to skiing in this area, in the last years, the weather changed a lot, so we don't really have snow, maybe one month, so it doesn't really worth it. And uh, obviously now, when Brown Castle is closed, this area is kind of like uh, you you don't see any car coming towards Brown, no tourists, which is totally unusual in the last uh, 30 years since the revolution. I mean, the castle was never locked, never. So that must be sort of strange. Um, you posted some photos on Facebook of what looked like you were all alone in the castle in, in the torture chamber. Um, first of all, were you really alone? Were you sneaking around? <laughs> Give us the backstories to those cool photos of you in the, in the torture chamber. Now, our guys from the marketing and uh, um, public relations decide to uh, go there and you know have this kind of uh, photos with Dracula uh, staying at home in quarantine uh, and uh, to give a feeling to the other people that they were obviously trying to come, but with all this situation, it's uh, it's not possible. So uh, we went there and we got some photos with uh, me uh, playing Dracula or Vlade Baylor at Brown Castle, being alone in the dark. Very sad that you're all alone, <laughs> and 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 sending the message. You know, Dracula wants you to stay at home. <laughs> I actually oh, yeah. with the the same thing. The um, a group in Spain who I did some interviews with asked me to send a message, convincing people it's best to stay inside. So I had myself and this. I said. Dracula wants you to stay out. If you leave your house, the virus could get you or Dracula will get you. Whatever is worse, it's your, it's up to you. So well, we want... Our, our message, our message was, 
our message was actually that even Dracula is afraid of coronavirus, and I was uh, staying in the castle, hiding myself and washing my hands and, you know, uh, telling to uh, all the other people, stay at home and I will wait for you. I've been here for hundreds of years, stay at home like three, four months, and then I will wait for you, which I think <laughs> it, uh, it's worth it for oh, me for and sure. for them. Oh, yeah. No, on a serious note, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's incredible how contagious this is and how long the virus will live on, on different, like on metal, on wood. Um, you know, it's, it, it is incredible. But on, on a lighter note, um, tell the people who this, uh, this interview will go to, one of your jobs at Brand Castle is dressing up as Vlad the Impaler. And this is something you do uh, at Halloween when the, the parties are, are wonderful. This is something where when you and I were together at uh, leading up to the Airbnb night at Brand Castle, you were all dressed up. Um, so tell people some of the fun things that you do with your job and what you're missing and what people are missing not being able to go to Brand Castle right now. Well, because you mentioned the Halloween party, which is our biggest event. Uh, I, this year, it will be probably, if, well, every year it got bigger and bigger and bigger because we have people from, uh, it's incredible how many people celebrate Halloween even in Russia. Um, and if, uh, even uh, they even celebrate uh, Valentine's Day. But from Faroe Island, from Belize Island. And it's so great, that event, when you see so many people from so many different places uh, just coming there to enjoy one night, coming so far away from Argentina, Brazil, um, Australia, Canada. And uh, obviously it is a great moment for me because I am uh, playing, uh, I am uh, getting dressed in bloody pillar and I'm, uh, I'm kind of like... Um, uh, welcoming people in my castle, and then they all go to have a party, a huge party with music and all this. And uh, we do also have different events, like the one, uh, uh, those ones, I mean, you had more than one, because you came with Airbnb, History Channel, and obviously I get to get dressed very often. And for me, it's incredible to see the impact of one character from a small country, it, it is so popular all around the world, uh, even from Isle of Man. Uh, yeah. We had. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's incredible to see. Talk a little bit, because you, you and I know very well, and, and uh, it's wonderful the way you're promoting, as are the rest of the tour guides, that my great-granduncle Bram Stoker was, was influenced by two images of Bran Castle, um, to, to include Bran Castle as Castle Dracula in his novel Dracula because of these two books, Charles Boner as well as uh, Elizabeth Maciarelli. But there is only small amount of evidence linking Vlad the Impaler to Bran Castle. Uh, what, what is that evidence that, you, that is possible that his interest to this area and why we have connected Vlad to Bran Castle, in addition to Bram and his writing. Well, first of all, let me say thank you, because I'm still using the documents you sent me uh, and the picture that uh, your grand-grandfather used. Um, and we have to be so happy that Bram Stoker decided to set the location of his story. Thanks to him, we have like last year, one million tourists uh, that they visit the Brown Castle. And now, obviously, it's known as Dracula Castle. And when it comes to the second question, my, my best uh, idea to explain this is that there are so many stories which are popular now uh, with new movies like Game of Thrones, um, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit City. And some of them are great stories. I, I like them a lot, like uh, Harry Potter. Uh, or The Hobbit. Now, when it comes to Dracula, like you said, there are few evidence that uh, uh, Vlad, the character, Vlad the Impaler, uh, the historical character, was there. But we, we, we don't have to forget the fact that he was the king of 
uh, Valachia, and he was born in Transylvania. And my best explanation is that when you go to visit the Hobbit city, because you like the story Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or Game of Thrones, you know deep down in your heart, even though you like the story, that they are only fictionary characters. I mean, at one point when you visit the Hobbit city, they will tell you this is the home of the Hobbit, but the Hobbit never exists. <laughs> so when it comes to Dracula and Vlad the Impaler, he exists. This, this was his country, and this castle was at the crossroad uh, from his home uh, in Transylvania down to Valachia, where he was the king, and it was a very important castle during his life, uh, a military castle as a safe house where they used to hide every royal family when they were under attack. So obviously, when you go there, you do get to get in touch with this part of history when they were under attack and they were hiding in the castle. Something that you cannot experience when you go to the Hobbit city or right. Harry Potter. That's a, that's a great explanation. Um, and since I have you, why don't you give our viewers a little understanding of what the um, the Habsburg family really likes people to understand is the background of Queen Marie and how benevolent she was and, and obviously her connection to Brand Castle. So we have the fictional side, but the factual side really is the history of the Habsburgs and who, who own the place and Queen Marie and her background. Well, when it comes to Queen Mary, you cannot stop me because I can talk for hours. But uh, there was a movie. There was a movie recently in Hollywood. That it was played in Romania this year, which I recommend to all your uh, viewers and also to you if you didn't see it yet. Uh, it came out in, um, I think, in January. I, I went with my colleagues, Queen Marie of Romania. It's a great movie. Okay. Uh, and it's in English. And you get to know Queen Mary, just an episode of her uh, her life, the peace uh, conference in Versailles, in Paris, where uh, when the moment when uh, she got to meet Woodrow Wilson and she negotiated with the Prime Minister of England, the Prime Minister of France, and you just get to see how great she was as uh, uh, her personality. And then I recommend to uh, your viewers to... Um, remember that she was actually a, a princess of Great Britain and Ireland. I mean, she was born with this title, Her Royal Highness Maria Alexandra Victoria of Saxe Coburg Gotha, Princess of Great Britain and Ireland. And she grew up till the age 16 in England, and she wrote the book, The Story of My Life, which is an incredible, great book that you can read in, during this period, it's, uh, two months in home, and uh, it's in three volumes, and you get to know a great personality that was never, never uh, covered in Hollywood or any other story just because she was a queen of a small country, uh, the queen of Romania. But as a personality, she actually impressed the whole world at the peace conference in Paris. And if you watch the movie, Queen Marie of Romania, you will understand why. So in few words, you will fall in love with this queen. That's that's great to know. I, I didn't know that. You and I have had many chats when I've been visiting over there and we've been on the film sets together, but I didn't know this movie is made, so that's great. I, wa I want to share one more uh, fu sort of funny memory that you and I had together um, and see. I want to see how much you remember of this. But you remember when we were filming the History Channel Mysteries at the Museum and uh, unlike Airbnb, they didn't have the money to rent the whole thing. So it was open to all the other tourists that day. And your job was to show me and the film crew the secret passage going from the first floor up to the third floor. And as we got there, there was lots of people in line to go up through this teeny little passage. And in your normal sort of humorous way, you said, okay, we're now going to go up the secret passage, and you can tell why the passage was made. If anybody's claustrophobic, we'll know that very soon. And of course, as soon as you said those words, you didn't know that I was claustrophobic, and I started feeling very <laughs> uptight and also very <laughs> embarrassed that the film crew was going to see me 
start to cry <laughs> and, and not be able to go in the secret passage. Now, I've been in the secret passage many times, but not when it's so crowded with people that I didn't know, I didn't have the feeling I could get stuck in there. So do you remember what you said and how we, we solved that problem? As a professional guide as you were, you were also thinking very quickly on your feet. Do you remember what you did to help me get out of that situation and not, not look bad in front of the camera? Well, what comes to my mind is what I say to all the groups that I have. Uh, I tell them that it's very narrow. Uh, I ask them if they want to go inside, and I, I, I ask again, is somebody claustrophobic? Uh, and then I said, no need to hide, because we're going to find out in a moment when we go inside. But I don't remember exactly what I said to you. <laughs> well, that, that, that's what made me feel weird. But you, it was very professional of you. You said, OK, no problem. Dacre, we're going to walk this way. The, the, we went up the stairs and, and let the film crew go up the secret passage. And it was like, oh, thank God. He, had a, he, he didn't make me go through here. We, we got around the outside and went up the regular stairs. And we were waiting at the top for these guys. And it was like, oh, oh yeah, my I God. Remember, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could have been terrible. But as, as it was, you helped me get away with it. So it was very nice. Yeah, so... so let let this be uh, to tell to everybody, if they come, no need to feel afraid because we do have a different way. If you are thinking that you are claustrophobic, uh, you can come because we do have a secret passage. It's very narrow, but we do have a different accent for those people like you, sir, that can go uh, around. Sure, in though. the regular stairs. What, what yes. was the secret passage? What was the... Tell our viewers, uh, what was it built for? What was the purpose of it for, for the Habsburgs? Well, six, uh, there is in every castle in Europe, and I guess all around the world, in Canada, or because uh, they do have uh, some castles over there, no matter where you go, there is a secret passage in every castle. And the main purpose is to um, run away and save themselves. If, if there is a military castle or if there is a royal castle, to save the royal family, the king or the queen, when they are under attack. So exactly the same here was used by uh, them to hide when they were under a siege or under attack, and they were able to, because they have a secret compartment in the East Tower where they had food and water to survive like a couple of weeks till the garnison from Russia will come to assist the city nearby. Or, so, or, if, there's a, or if there's a pandemic and they have to get away and get, oh, get yeah. away from... <laughs> with a disease. <laughs> but I have a, uh, a very small number of rooms, so if people want to run away, um, they need to come with food for two months, and that, obviously we can hide them in the castle and survive. Tell us, um, yeah, the, let, let's, let's finish with this, because since I've been there, you, you guys have opened up the new elevator that was, was built for Queen Marie many years ago, but now it's it's repurposed. Uh, let's finish with a little bit of a promotional thing for the new uh, the new feature at Brand Castle. Well, it, what, something that impressed me is that we uh, it's now one year and a half since we um, start with the electric elevator that goes down in the dungeon at the secret tunnel and the secret passage under the castle, and. So many people heard about this. Obviously, we did some uh, uh, advertising in uh, uh, all the Romanian national tele television and stuff. But they are. I met people that they are coming like the third or the fourth time saying that uh, it's only worth it because they've been there before, like five or f uh, five times before. You know, because you come when you are in the kingdom garden, and then you go as a, uh, in the school, and then in the college, and then you come with your family when you get married, and then you come again when you have a child. So this guy said, I am now the third time using the electric elevator for my uh, uh, children because it's uh, a great show. So obviously we are very happy. It is uh, uh, it won the first uh, special purpose that. Uh, the, for, uh, number one uh, special purpose ele electric elevator in 2018 in California. So it's quite a, quite a great uh, 
reason to come. I mean, we add another reason, complementary with you know the book of Bram Stoker, the movies about Vlad or Queen Mary, and now we have a very modern elliptic elevator that takes you down in the dungeon. You go up in the future and you go down in the in the past, ah, or the other so way around. So it's a little bit of it's it's not just the elevator; it's an experience where you're learning things historical as you go. Yeah. Oh yes, we have inside like twelve uh, screens with multimedia show, music, and uh, the electric elevator goes down into the heart of the mountain, thirty-two meters, no station, and then you are in the heart of the mountain. The doors will open, and you will see there is a tunnel. It was used by the soldiers. They used to go down by ropes. People will go with the electric elevator. It's much more easier. And when they get down there, the doors will open. The passage, it was used by the soldiers to run away. Obviously, now people don't have to run away. They have to walk and enjoy the show. They are 12 screens. They can take pictures or video. And um, then they will go out in from the mountain nearby the Royal Park. So basically, it's kind of like uh, 10 to 15 minutes of uh, adventure and of adrenaline, 66 meters in total. Cool. <clears throat> well, Matthew, thank you for your time. Let's let's just uh, wrap this up with, back on a serious note, um, you guys are in isolations and different different versions of isolations, not not quite so serious wh where you are. What do, what do you see in the next month or so in your country? Um, you think this is going to, uh, the measures of isolation and, and medical supplies will help your country, you'll get back to normal. What is your prediction of the next couple of months? Well, I think uh, the authority are doing a great job and I think somewhere in one month uh, or two, maximum two, we're gonna go back to our normal life. Unfortunately, my battery is uh, telling me that we are going out, so I have to say goodbye. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, idea and I hope everybody will have a, a, a short period in America. God bless America. God bless Romania, too. Okay. Thank you for your time. All right, man. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.